In this video we are finding probabilities from a probability density function. To start off with we're going to do two examples and in both examples we're going to firstly be recapping how to find k. Secondly we're going to look at how to use integration to find a probability and we're also going to experience questions with a notation such as this. The probability that x is greater than a certain amount. In the second example we're going to be using shape formula to find a probability and during this example we are going to experience questions where we have notation where x is between two given values. So let's move on to our first example. It's quite a tough example, quite a tough exam question with um, a lot of integration to do. Um, the first part of the question is to show that k is 3 over 62. I'm going to add a second part to this question. So once we've shown that k is 3 over 62, I would also like to work out the probability that y is greater than 2. But getting back to the part A, um, of course remember that the area under a probability density curve is equal to 1. So we know that the area underneath this curve here, this line, is 1. So in order to solve part A, we need to integrate that function and make it equate to 1. So I'm going to start by putting k on the outside of the integration. We're integrating between the limits 1 and 3. And we've got y squared plus 2y plus 2 on the inside, and all of that's equal to 1. So if we integrate those, we're going to get y cubed over 3 plus 2y squared over 2 plus 2y, and that's again between 1 and 3, and that is equal to 1. We now need to substitute in our limits, so substitute in the top limit, we're going to get 27 over 3, which is 9, plus 27 over 2, which is sorry, 18 over 2, which is 9 again, and 2 times 3 is 6, and then when we substitute in 1, we're going to have 1 over 3 plus 2 over 2, which is 1, plus 2 times 1, which is 2, and of course all of that equals 1. I've forgotten to put my k outside of the integration on that second line, so I've just added that back in. If we calculate all of those numbers in the brackets here, we should get that k multiplied by 62 over 3, and that equals to 1. So if we isolate k, we should get k equals 3 over 62. So we have now proved that k is 3 over 62. Okay, so now I want to show that well, sorry, I've shown that. I want to now focus on part B, where we're finding the probability that y is greater than 2. So, for finding a probability, the probability that a number is between two certain values is simply the area between those two values in the in the function. So applying this idea I'm gonna integrate my function between 2 and 3 which is my top value. So I'm gonna take k out and of course k is 3 over 62 and inside we're gonna have y squared plus 2y plus 2 and when we work this out, we'll get our probability that y is greater than 2. 
So let's go through these steps. So we'll get y cubed over 3 plus 2y squared over 2 plus 2y between 2 and 3. I'm going to substitute in both limits in now. So for the first, when we substitute in 3, we should get the same as before, 9 plus 9 plus 6. And then we're going to take away 8 over 3 plus 8 over 2 plus 4. And if we calculate everything that's in the bracket there, we should get 3 over 62 times 40 over 3. And then if we work this out, we should get 20 over 31 as our final probability. So in order to work out the probability there, we had to integrate between the two limits. So if I was to sketch our function, it's a positive quadratic between 1 and 3, so it's probably going to look something like that. We integrated the area that we wanted, which was between 2 or greater than 2, so the area that is under the curve greater than 2 is between 2 and 3. So the, we integrated between those two limits to find that red shaded area, which gave us this probability of 20 over 31. Moving on to the second example, we are now going to be using shape formulae to firstly find k and then secondly I would like to add in a question where we're finding the probability that x is between 1 and 2.8. So to find k, I'm going to firstly start by sketching our function. We know that it's between 0 and 2, it has a height of k. And then between 2 and 3, I'm going to substitute 3 into this second function. I'll get 3k, so the height at 3 is 3k. Now to work this out, we know that the total area of the, under the curve is 1. I'm going to split it up into two parts, so I've got shape A and shape B. That rectangle shape A, the area of that is 2 times k, so we've got 2k. And then for the trapezium that we have there, the height of this side is k. And the height of this side is 3k, so we're going to have k plus 3k over 2 times by the height, so the distance between these two, which is 1. So what we'll end up getting is 2k plus 4k over 2, which will give us 2k, so ultimately we're going to end up with 4k, and we know that the entire area equals 1 which means that k is 1 over 4. The second part asks us to sketch the probability density function for all values of x. So instead of k, we can just write a quarter, and 3k is going to be 3 quarters. And so we've also sketched the probability density function. But now for part c, I'd like to find the area under under the curve between 1 and 2.8. Now what makes this a little bit more challenging than the previous example is that we have two different functions so we're going to need to find them separately so between 1 and 2 we're going to find this area here and then we're going to add it to the area between 2 and 2.8 so that area there so there's my line of two where the two functions meet. We need to find both of those areas, the one on the right and the one on the left, and add them together. The one on the left is just a rectangle with a width of one and a height of a quarter. So we'll do one times a quarter, 
which would be 0.25, that's rectangle number one. And for rectangle number two, sorry, trapezium number two, shape number two, we have our first height here of a quarter. The next height, we need to substitute in 2.8 into this function up here. And I should get 0.65 divided by 2 and then multiplied by the height between the two parallel sides, just using the area of a trapezium here. And the distance from 2 up to 2.8 is 0.8. So when we work this out, we should get 0.36. So if we add the two areas of rectangle 1 and trapezium 2, so that's 0 0.25 plus 0 0.36, we'll get 0 0.61. And that is the probability that x is between 1 and 2.8.